Did you accidentally bend pins on your motherboard or did you buy one with a bend pin or whatever happened to your motherboard that it has a defective socket? Well, don't fear because there are ways to get it repaired or to repair it yourself. First of all, we are I'm showing you right now footage of me repairing a socket on a 1155 motherboard which is very old but in this case very rare because I want to use it for overclocking it was shipped like this without a socket cover and who knows how it has been stored so this happened to it and uh, well it seems like this is wasn't the only thing wrong with it because after I fixed it it still didn't boot but that's none of this uh, topic right now but the this is the best way to fix bent pins so i'm using my phone and with the phone camera and the flash on in video mode you can zoom in pretty far on these bent pins and you don't need a microscope or whatever else like uh, for example linus tech tips tells you you need a microscope to fix your bent pins no you can just use your phone that works i think even better because you can look at the pins from the side and makes it much easier as you can see here there are like 20 bent pins right there and i can fix all of them pretty easily i'm just using a very very thin um, hex screwdriver and uh, yeah as you can see i am moving them pin by pin and I can see everything pretty clearly. So it's pretty easy. It might be a little more difficult on current 18, uh, what is it, 54 sockets or 1700 sockets because there are a little bit more pins on the same area or on a only slightly larger area, but it still is doable. The other option would be, because I have worked in retail on a PC hardware retailer, I know for a fact that it is possible for uh, brands or for like asus or gigabyte to fix those boards relatively cheap um, of course if it's out of warranty if it's a really old board they might not honor it for that kind of price but um, they might still offer you uh, if it's like a really rare board and you want to you have it is worth a, a lot of money then you might be able to get it fixed for a higher price but if it's within warranty and so it has still warranty and it has broken or bent pins or whatever or the socket is damaged in another way uh, you might be able to contact asus or gigabyte or whatever manufacturer you bought your board from and contact them directly not the store where you bought your board because they might offer you to fix the board for a fee they sometimes even do it for free but usually they will charge you a fee between uh, 50 and 80 euros or usd depending on where you live uh, to replace the socket that might be worth it depending on the price of the board but i have had that um, multiple times in uh, the in my days uh, working as a hardware retailer where people bend pins like for example they put in the cpu the wrong way so they bent pins uh, that way or they dropped something in the socket or whatever that oftentimes uh, worked out and we sent the boards in um, they had to pay a fee from ranging between 30 to 80 euros and they got the board actually the board repaired and then it worked perfectly after that so don't throw away your defective or you think defective board just because it has a a bent pin or a few bent pins because it's really not that bad and it is possible to get repaired and that's really important to take away because i see a lot of people that actually sell their board on ebay for really cheap or wherever facebook marketplace whatever and then people are buying it <clears throat> and trying to fix it and uh, well you have to buy a new board which might uh, lose you like 200 euros or something just because you have a few bent pins or even more depending on how expensive the board was or is. I hope this video could help you some. Obviously you can see in the footage that I have um, tried to repair the pins but the problem is after I did that and tried to boot the board well it still did not boot and said no memory detected. Hmm. Uh, the issue was there 
on the back of the board there were some cut traces as i said again who knows what they have done to the board before but those traces look like they are uh, from the cpu to the memory channels so i'm figuring that uh, those are responsible for um, data between or data transfer between the cpu and memory and therefore the uh, motherboard thinks there is no memory installed and gives me an error code i might try to fix that in the future if i am um, uh, got my soldering skills a little better but currently um, it is not in my capabilities of doing so uh, but this might be a project for a later date obviously there can also be other things wrong with motherboards like if the bios is uh, if you brick your motherboard during a bios flash those things can also be fixed by the manufacturer pretty easily because while nowadays the BIOS chips aren't replaceable on motherboards, uh, the manufacturers have tools that clamp onto the BIOS chips itself. If your motherboard does not have a flashback feature, such as all AM5 boards, because they are required to, then you can send it in and for a fee, they will reflash your BIOS and your board will work again. So that's also something you can do if you had, for example, a power outage during a BIOS flash. That's it from me. I wish you a nice day. And as always, goodbye.